Ravs here. I read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton and I have a couple of thoughts. Why not go chapter by chapter and just like really dig into everything that I highlighted and as you can see it's a lot so I'm just gonna get started. The prologue on the 6th of April in the year 1812 precisely two days before her 16th birthday Penelope Featherington fell in love. And it's the 6th of April today. So cute. So cute. Right from the get-go, <laughs> the third paragraph where um, Penelope is saying that she's been in love with him since, you know, she was 16. But Colin, Colin, Colin? Yeah, I'm not really, I'm, Colin, he certainly didn't fall in love with her in 1812 and not in 1813. 1814, 1815, or not even in all the years of 1816 to 1822, and certainly not in 1823. Penelope, Penelope waited for this man. She, she waited for a man. And not in the sense where like she saw, went out of her way to wait. It wasn't like that. It just happened. Um, she was really comfortable with unrequited love and thought that that's what was going to happen with her when it came to Colin and that Colin would never fall in love with her. I understand that and it was so sad, so heartbreaking. But imagine waiting for a man that long. Couldn't be me. And just reading that made me so sad. I was like, Penelope, let me find a time machine i'll meet you like you know rest in peace but like i'll meet you where you were alive and like i might be shunned because of my piercings and my tattoos but like don't worry like we could be roommates i can help you get rid of this love for colin because how many years is that after that we get into the scene where her bonnet flies off her head and it whips colin in the face and he falls off his horse and instead of getting mad because penelope hadn't much experience with the laughter of men that is so sad so when colin laughed she just like she went putty in his arms like she was just like yes this is my man i claim him and i claim him for many years <laughs> I wonder what we're gonna get in the season. Uh, I know that we're going to get flashbacks of when they're little. And my prediction is that we're gonna get that for the fourth episode, which is called Old Friends. I'm excited to see how that dynamic has changed in the show versus in the book. If we do get the horse falling scene, like that'd be really, really adorable. But one thing that like broke my heart a little bit was the end of that scene where she basically sums up why Colin Bridgerton would not love her. She just goes, she simply wasn't the sort of girl who attracted a man like him and she feared that she never would be that is so sad it's giving high school ravs and i'm not i don't like that <laughs> i hope we do get to see a confidence boost in um penelope even more so than in the book in the sneak peek that we did get she has this sense of insecurity where she's like because you're embarrassed of me and she says that yeah i'm the laughing stock of the ton and like she's kind of almost accepting that as a role for her and i can't wait for this uh season to progress and for her to like everyone to be proved wrong like penelope is that girl she's she's penelope like she's mommy whistle down i want her to like step into her power and I can't wait for that because in the book it was really sweet but I feel like the stakes are a lot higher in the TV show than they are in the book. Seeing that unfold will be really interesting. Oh my god okay so as a writer's perspective in the middle of the prologue there's this thing that the writer does where they go on and on about Penelope and her insecurities and how she feeds into the things that people say about her. Her weight, her appearance, her personality being dull and all of these things kind of set up a transition into her talking about Lady Whistle down and how Lady Whistledown has wrote about her in the sheets. You know, calls her an overripe citrus fruit. Um, that's not funny. The poor girl appeared to have drowned amidst the ruffles of her dress. Like, stuff like that, you know? Like, Lady Whistledown in the book wasn't revealed to be Penelope until later. Like, this was the book in the series. Everyone found out who Lady Whistledown was, and I just found it to be an incredible setup for the author to essentially showcase how insecure Penelope was and how her mindset was so critical of herself and then to be juxtaposed with Lady Whistledown and 
like this powerful voice to kind of set up this relationship where as a reader you wouldn't guess that Penelope was the person behind those words because how can a writer that is thinks so lowly of themselves and ha doesn't have that confidence pull off Lady Whistledown and to be able to have that planted in a, a reader's head I can understand the shock when they do discover that Penelope is Lady Whistledown and I found that really 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 like written well when it came to that decision the writer made. So now we're gonna get to like the end of the prologue. This is where Colin Bridgerton he does something that is forgiving in the book, Colin in frustration tells his brothers that are teasing him and telling him that maybe he should marry Penelope. He tells them, I'm certainly not gonna marry Penelope Featherington. And in that moment, Penelope calls him out for it. She goes, oh, and she's all like, I never asked you to marry me. And then she pulls Benedict in and she's like, she's like, you are not going to marry me. She said, her voice sounding very strange and hollow to her ears. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to marry your brother Benedict. And like Benedict's just like, oh. And then just to like make the, the matter a little sweet, Anthony walks her home. And it's one of those things where he, Anthony's apologizing on Colin's behalf. And it's not this, this horrible scene that we saw at the end of season two. He's not going, are you mad? He's not going, never in your wildest fantasies, Fife. He's not disrespecting Penelope at her home to a place he was invited to. I swear, that scene is like a cyst. It's like a cyst that like grows underneath your skin and then it pulses and throbs and gets all red. The more you like pick at it, the bigger it gets. Sometimes it just goes away and you don't think about it. Then randomly months go by and like you're thinking about it again and I can't help I understand they did it for dramatic effect. It would have been so okay if we got this version as well. But hey, considering the sneak peek that we got, at least she does stand up for herself in a different manner. I just wish she wasn't laughing with other people. Like that's the only thing that I wish didn't happen. We're going, you know, the dramatic tropey route. So it's fine, like I'm fine. <laughs> and then we finish the prologue with this one sentence. Unrequited love was never easy, but at least Penelope Featherington was used to it. So in chapter one, it's just a lot of setup. It's talk about Colin being back from his travels, being back at the town, and Penelope is kind of having a back and forth with her family. And you get the sense of like dread when it comes to like Penelope's feelings towards, especially her mother and how um, her two older sisters are married off, but she has a younger sister, Felicity. Her mother seems to be kind of honing in on. In the TV show, we do not have Felicity. Felicity doesn't exist. So I was intrigued to see how they were going to maneuver that or work around that uh, in the TV show. My whole thing is like, how is that gonna pan out? Does TV Portia know or have like a sort of feeling about Penelope and Colin? She's more oblivious in the book than in the TV show. I'm wondering how that proposal scene is gonna go and like asking for Penelope's hand. That's something I wanted to like highlight and kind of pose to you guys. Like, what do you guys think? Also, another thing I wanted to kind of note was Penelope and Eloise's relationship is vastly different in the books than they are on TV. Going into season three and into Penelope and Colin's story, Eloise is going to be pissed at Penelope and in the book, that's not the case. In the book, they're friendly. Uh, Eloise doesn't know yet. They're besties thinking about being spinsters together. Well, Eloise, in her mind, that's the that's the plan. Penelope is invited to the Bridgerton home a lot because of Eloise and she has interactions with Colin because of that. Now that they're fighting in the TV show, like I wonder how is she going to get into the Bridgerton household? Are they going to sneak her in? Like is Colin gonna sneak her in for the lessons? Like I wonder how that's gonna pan out really. But yeah, I hope Eloise and Penelope aren't like mad at each other for too long because I can handle that. The writer does this thing where we get like little foreshadowing snippets of what's going to happen and what the major conflicts are going to be in the rest of the book. Colin has this thing where he doesn't like to be called charming only because 
it's his own insecurity of not finding his purpose yet and Colin feels like he's lagging behind which is honestly why I feel like he like runs away often and tries to find a purpose elsewhere. Charming is kind of like a trigger word for him because he assumes when people think of him as charming there's nothing else to him. I kind of see that happening and staying for the TV show because in season two we had that conversation about purpose between Colin and Penelope. There was also that scene, a second scene at the pond where he was feeding the ducks and he was all like mopey because he was like everyone has like a purpose. Antony is getting married, Benedict has his art, he's all like what am I doing? Like that is going to be a huge factor and a huge thing in season three because Penelope also has her own goals like she wants to get married, she wants to get out, she wants to continue making money for herself so she's not um, under the watchful glare of mama. There's many points where Penelope and Colin kind of fight throughout the book. Not like fighting as if they're brawling and ish. They argue and they they have like talks about privilege and they have talks about her him being a man and her being a woman from a household that like honestly is a lot different than the Bridgertons. Chapter two, the eclair scene. So adorable. There's like a little bit of nervousness because Colin hasn't seen Penelope in a while. Playfulness, dare I say flirty. Just a, a tiny little crumb of it. Because Colin's just naturally a little flirty. I loved it. What I do think is that it's not going to be in season three and there's going to be no variation of it. There was an interviewer that asked Luke about the eclair scene as well as the carriage and the mirror and he only responded to the mirror and the carriage. He seemed a little confused about the eclair scene. From that interaction I'm guessing that we don't get the eclair scene in the tv show but hey if there's like some sort of similarity in a specific scene that we get like a new scene I'd be just as happy because the Claire scene was so cute. Penelope was such a funny character. No, that wasn't quite right. She was surprising. So we're getting like little crumbs of him like seeing Penelope and like really taking her in. Whereas maybe before he didn't. He's observing her from a different light already in chapter two. In chapter two, Penelope refuses a dance with Colin because her whole thing is that she feels like she's been pitied. His mom kind of forces him to dance with her um, throughout the years. I feel like that's different in the show. Like, does anyone else feel the same? At no point do we see Violet kind of like poking or nudging Colin to go and dance with Penelope. He's always kind of doing that on his own. So I don't know if that was like purposeful for the writers to change that in the TV show. So it would be fun to see how that change also alludes to Colin's denial. And I really do want Penelope to refuse a dance, at least one dance with Colin in season three. Whether she's angry and she does so or she she's dancing with Lord Devlin, you know? You know? Her dance card is full. Sorry. Sorry. I feel like an old like English teacher dissecting little little things but hey an English teacher would probably not read smut in their class so it's fine. We get Lady Danbury. Lady Danbury and Penelope's relationship throughout this entire book is the sweetest thing ever and I will riot if we don't get that. They name their child after her. We better get that relationship and we better get Lady Danbury teasing Colin. He hates being around her and I feel like that would be such a fun dynamic considering Lady D Danbury becomes almost protective over Penelope. She sees herself, her younger self, in Penelope. Penelope. If we're going with any of the scenes in the book, Lady Danbury and Penelope like need to be besties. Like it has to be a thing. I will burn Netflix down. The quarters. Headquarters? An arsonist. Me. Coming to a theater near you. Another thing with Lady Danbury, she kind of poses a challenge to the entire ton where she's just like, I am going to give a money award to anyone who unmasks Lady Whistledown. It's one of the side plots that propel this book from point A to point B. I don't know if we're gonna get that in season three. We might get a version of it, it will make it dramatic, but whether or not we're gonna get the full unmasking at the end, I'm unsure about. At chapter three, I believe, we get Berkeley Square. This is another scene in the book that the fans love. It was adorable. I really, 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 really want some version of this scene 
in the TV show. The scene basically, it has Colin see Penelope dancing in Berkeley Square. And she's kind of like alone doing her thing and he's like admiring her from afar. He doesn't know he's admiring her, but he is. In the TV show, we get her being mad about the fact that he doesn't want to court her and then he admitted it so to like gentlemen that could possibly be suitors. I feel like we could get a variation of this where he's like, let's dance, Pen, and she's just like, no, because you don't want to court me. And you're not a serious suitor. It's like, get out of my face. You know, but in a nice pen way. She's not me. So yeah, I would not be nice. Again, the author puts in different little like seeds for us to pick at. When it comes to Colin and Penelope, a huge part of their story is the fact that Penelope put him on a pedestal for so many years when she was infatuated with him. But this book, their story kind of like knocks him down and she sees him for him. She sees him as a human. She sees him as a human with insecurities, with flaws. And one of those flaws is his temper. Now I recognize that this book was like this whole series was written in like the early 2000s or so so I'm going to go with that mentality but his temper is something that isn't the greatest in the book like yes it makes him human but I also don't like how he handles his anger and how he kind of like grabs at Penelope later on um I'll get into that later. TV Colin and book Colin seem different but same at the same time. What I do hope again the little seeds that we're getting Colin is a foodie. He eats. He eats all the time. He eats when he's stressed. He eats when he's happy. Honestly, he would have a kink of like having Penelope eating on and off of her. Like I could totally see that. I want to see that. I want to see Foodie Colin. That wholesome characteristic, I want to see. Angry Colin, I want to see in some facets. I want to see angry Colin in his protective era. I want to see him angry other people for hurting or harming or coming close to Penn. I want him raging in jealousy. I want him to be acting all stupid in his anger but when it comes to actually holding Penelope and like shaking her maybe not like let's not do that like let's ease up on that have Colin burn the world but like leave Penelope unscathed. Another important scene is when Colin cuts himself with like the letter opener after he kind of runs in from the chamber pot. Um, he like sees Penelope reading through his like notebooks and his journals. He's all like, what? Like, why are you reading my shit? And she's all like, oh, like, I'm sorry. Like it was left open. He cuts his like hand and then they slow down and they laugh. It's a vulnerable moment and I want that. And I think we're getting that and I'm like, I'm excited. That might be one of the scenes I'm most excited for and I feel like we're getting that in episode two. In that moment, we have him say he'd always liked Penelope, but how was it he'd never realized how intelligent she was up until now? So his eyes are starting to open. His eyes, they're starting to open. And I feel like it's gonna be the same in the show. It's really intimate to be cleaning someone's wound, to be like helping them with that. Like, they're gonna, no gloves. They're gonna be touching each other. And like, for some reason that gets everyone hot and bothered in that era. We also get like nervous Colin. We get like insecure Colin. He doesn't think his writing is good. So when Penelope kind of like praises him for it, he has like a praise gig. <laughs> But at the end of the chapter, this is what I wanted to flag down. He didn't think she wanted to go, but he somehow knew that she would. She'd think it was proper thing to do, and she'd probably also think it was what he wanted. Nothing he was surprised to realize could be further from the truth, and nothing could have scared him more. He's scared. He's scared of what he's thinking, of what he's feeling. That's what I want to see. We're at chapter six. When Colin realizes that Penelope really liked it, he was horrified. Here he was considered one of the most popular and sophisticated men of the town, and he'd been reduced to a bashful schoolboy hanging on Penelope Featherington's every word just for a single scrap of praise. I'm telling you, praise me. <laughs> and it's adorable. And Penelope, of course Penelope would be the one to be praising him. Like, it just works. They work. And then we get the talk on purpose, and the chemistry is chemistrying. They're getting closer. That's always great, you know? We're gonna be seeing that. We're gonna be seeing that vulnerability. Whole scene, 10 out of 10. I can't wait to see what the show delivers. At the end of that scene, they fought. He apologizes quite a bit in this book, and honestly, that's how it should be. <laughs> 
I find it interesting that he's constantly like like seeking her out um, when she's in public because he just want he has this urge to apologize and he wants everything to constantly be okay between him and Penn because if it's not okay he like gets stressed and it's in his head and I think that will be a huge factor to what we're gonna see with simping Colin in season three. It's not gonna let him rest. Like he's not gonna be able to sleep. Who knows if he's gonna be able to eat? He's gonna be throwing rocks, holding a boom box <laughs> at her garden. I'm still holding on to the hope that that garden sneak peek that we got, I think that's when he apologizes. But a lot of people are saying that it's when he kisses her. I want that to be true, but again, we'll see. But what I'm trying to say is Colin is a simp. Colin Bridgerton is a simp. He is the simpiest of simps. Penelope deserves nothing less. Another scene that everyone kind of talks about, Penelope and Colin are at a musical. I believe it's called the Smythe Smith. Colin's sitting behind her and she's all like hot and bothered. And there's a lot of memes about Colin just like staring at Penelope during that time, which is why she's probably hot and bothered. And I really want that. I want that scene as well. I want many scenes in this book to make it into the show. I would actually want it even more after it, the kiss happened. Does that make sense? Like I would want him like staring at her and just like not being able to take his eyes off her after they kiss because it's one of those things where it's like his eyes are open and he's like oh my god kissed I can't believe we kissed but I'm gonna act normal about it and then he proceeds to not act normal in public I just feel like that would be such a fun thing to do if we're gonna have like Colin staring at Penelope in random public sightings I want that to happen after the kiss just because it, it I just feel like that'd be so hilarious. Like, would that not be funny? <laughs> At the end of that chapter, we get Colin having playful banter between him, Eloise, Pen Penelope. Penelope is like, I'm so glad I came tonight. I can't remember a nicer evening. Truly, I can't. And then you have like Simp Colin in his bed later being like, he was staring at the ceiling in the bedroom of his new flat in Bloomsbury. It occurred to him that he felt the same exact way. And he's laying there thinking about why he feels all giddy and warm and why he had such a good day. And it's because of Penelope. We're getting to the nitty gritty. Another huge plot line I'm uh, like 90% sure we are going to see in season three is that Colin thinks that Eloise is Lady Whistledown. There are a lot of like Easter eggs and hints to that in season two. In the book that confrontation or that assumption leads to Pollen's first kiss. So he's all like, I need to talk to her. Like Eloise is Lady Whistledown. And Penn is like, girl, no, it's never that serious. Calm down. And he's like, yo, it is because the power of the word, all it will take is someone being like, Eloise, you are Lady Whistledown and she's ruined. It's scandal. And it's as easy as me being like, I seduced you. And Penelope's like, excuse me? And he's all like, yeah, like, it's just, you know, one thing of being like, I seduced you. That scandal is out in the world now, even if we didn't do anything. And then she's all, she's all like, oh, oh, I don't know what to say. And then he's like, oh, oh, and it hits him. He forgets about his whole entire rant and all he can think about is kissing Penelope. And there's just like this <laughs> nervous breakdown. And she's all like, oh, and he's all like, oh, she's not my sister. This person is a woman. <laughs> and at the end of it, he's like staring at her lips and he's trying to run away from her eyes and he can't. And she asks him, would you kiss me? And then we go into the next chapter. And that is when he's like a fumbling mess. Her whole thing is, yo, I'm a spinster. I'm gonna die. Please, like, I want to experience at least a kiss. He's freaking out and it's hilarious. He goes for it and they kiss. It's the cutest thing ever. And he's all like, a kiss is for two people. And I just wanted to flag that. While they're kissing, Penelope is really confused. It's new for her. He kind of like helps her. He slows down and he's like, you can touch me as well. Tell me that isn't Coach Colin. He is going to be helping her in season three. And if they get to a point where he's teaching her how to kiss, I could totally see him being like, a kiss is for two people. That is so Coach Colin. But then the ball drops because after the kiss is done, Penelope thanks him. In the TV show, it could either be thank you for, you know, pitying me and kissing me or it could be thank you for this lesson <laughs> and that is what he gets mad about because he's all like what this was a lesson oh right this was a lesson and she's all like thank you for this lesson Colin my dear friend <laughs> and then he's all like angry 
but because he doesn't understand his feelings and that that kiss meant more to him than it, just a simple lesson. I'm constantly just making up scenarios that like is possible, is it not? And then we see Colin, he finally confronts Eloise and he's like, yo, your lady whistle down and his anger gets out. Yo, like calm down. Eloise jokes and she's just like, you're looking and sounding like you're pretending to be Antony right now and it's not looking good on you. And he's all like, sit down, like you need to stop writing. And that whole interaction goes poorly and Eloise leaves. Colin is just like, oh my God, I'm lashing out on people because I'm still kind of like stressed about what happened with Penelope and how he like ran out on her. That apology comes later when he confronts Penelope at a ball, I think. A lot of things happen between then, you know, the Eloise confrontation, Lady Whistledown retiring. When he finally does come to apologize, Cressida. Cressida to the entirety of the ton claims that she is Lady Whistledown and no one believes her. She's like adamant. She's like, yes, I am Lady Whistledown. Okay, give me my money. Dan Danbury's just like, no. Like, Penelope, what do you think? At first, Penelope isn't gonna say anything. But then again, you know, we're getting that character arc. We're getting that, like, finding her voice, that confidence. And she goes, you know what? I don't think it's you. And then Lady Danbury's like, okay, we're gonna get a situation going here where if you're going to be saying that you're Lady Whistledown, I need proof. Cressida's fuming. She's like, you know what? Fine, I'll get you your proof. And that puts a little anxiety in my heart because I'm like, where is this? What is this proof? You know, like that's gonna come around. That's gonna come around. And it did. And we'll get to that. One thing in that chapter that isn't just Cressida <laughs> is the fact that Colin, his eyes are open. It's when he's viewing Penelope and he's thinking that she had changed. Colin didn't know when it had happened or even if any anyone other than himself had noticed it. But Penelope Featherington was not the same woman he used to know. Or maybe she was and he had changed, which made him feel even worse because if that was the case, then Penelope had been interesting and lovely and kissable years ago, and he hadn't the maturity to notice. The shades, the blinds, everything is becoming clearer. And the, another cute thing, dude, another cute thing. So I used page 200. Yes, Colin didn't get his chance to fully apologize to Penn because of the Cresta situation, but at the end of it, he supposed he should have deemed the evening a failure for that reason alone, but in all truth, he couldn't quite bring himself to do so. After all, he spent the better part of five minutes holding her hand. He's gushing about holding her hand, guys. Come on. That is so cute. And then the iconic scene that follows after that. So he wakes up, he's energized, the sun is out, he's happy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm gonna go eat, walk over to Penelope, I'm gonna apologize, all will be well, it's great. And then he notices that Penelope is going into a hired hack. And he's all like, girl, where are you going? <laughs> so he follows her and he gets angrier and angrier the closer they get to the destination. His anger comes from jealousy and he is so, so, so jealous. And I ate that ish up. And one thing that the book was missing was that jealousy component. The book did not have a suitor. The book did not have Lord Deblay. The TV show, on the other hand, does have a suitor, a very serious one. And I feel like we're going to be seeing that jealousy like a hundred times more in the TV show. And I'm so excited. He follows Penelope into a church. He goes, he confronts her. He rips the letter away from where she hid it. And she's all like trying to reach for it. He reads it and boom, he figures out that she is Lady Whistledown, as do all the readers. And what a great way to like reveal that. It was just impeccable. And after comes the carriage scene. I am not going to go in depth about the carriage scene, mostly because I will be giggling the entire time if I did so. But it's really intimate. They argue back and forth, talk about privilege again, talk about Penelope and her feelings about being seen as a wallflower, being seen as the unpopular one, whereas he doesn't have that problem. She confronts him about him leaving home and running away all the time from his responsibilities. He's all like, what's that? supposed to mean and they really connect they they hear each other out Penelope went out to put that letter even though Lady Whistledown had retired because she wanted to put out a letter that basically said that Cressida isn't her and that kind of like gets Colin to like ease up because he starts to notice that she's upset and that carries into a really church friendly scene <laughs> we'll see we'll see it in 
end of the show. At the end of it, they're cleaning themselves up because they've reached the Feather and Tenant's estate. That's when Penelope eats pavement. Colin Bridgerton asks her to marry him. She of course says yes. And that's when we get the scene that is hilarious and sad. Colin walks in to ask for Penelope's hand and is met with just a, a whole family's worth of Featheringtons. And he stands up for Penelope, which I really, really enjoyed. Whether or not we're gonna get something that is similar to that in the show, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Okay, so now we're getting lovey-dovey Colin and Penelope. Eloise has kind of a moment with both Colin and Penelope in, uh, in chapter 15. And as she leaves, Colin and Penelope get all freaky on the couch. I personally think that the furniture that Nicola keeps teasing about being broken in season three filming is that couch. They get all hot and bothered and Colin has a moment where he's about to say he loves her and he freaks out. He reassures her before he like leaves because he doesn't want to do what he did when he first kissed her. Full character development moment. Before he leaves, there's a cute moment where I think it's going to be in season three for sure because Nicola has been talking about it a lot. He takes her hand and squeezes it. Do I look a mess? She asked. He nodded. But you're my mess, he whispered. And he was very glad for that. All these two will do is make me cry. This is where Colin goes to the Duke of Hastings like house. He wants to speak to Daphne. Considering Phoebe will not be in season three, I really desperately, please, oh my god, I really desperately want this scene to be played out with Kate. Along with Lady Danbury and Penelope's relationship, I want Kate to be guiding people. Anyone else want that as well? Like, I want that. Like, that's something I'm crossing my fingers for. I hope we get that because it's a really cute moment between Colin and Daphne where Colin's just like, how do you know about love? Like, how do you know it feels? Because in his head, he thinks of it to be like uh, a love at first sight thing. A, a love is like a bolt of electricity. It's something that happens suddenly. Like, you'll know it when it happens. But what he feels for Penn is something that's natural, something that has grown over time, something that he didn't expect. And that is what confuses him. So when he comes and talks to Daphne about it, she's just so sweet. Like, it's just so cute and I want it. I want it, but I want it with Kate. During that interaction, we get a moment where he's insecure about his, his role as a husband because he feels like he'd be a dreadful husband. And Daphne's reassuring him and she's like, no, you will not. You're coming here and talking to me about love and how to love and all these things. And that goes to show that you're serious about this and you want Penelope to be loved in a way that she deserves. He even says that she deserves everything. Like she deserves a man that's like perfect for her. So like seeing that human reaction to finding out and wondering whether or not he's in love, it, it was refreshing. Really human. It didn't put like him on a pedestal like Penn has been doing. So it was, it was refreshing to see Colin in that light. And I hope we get to see that in season three. This is when things start to get a little like, <laughs> When it comes to the engagement, we really get to see the peak of Colin's anger. Because during the engagement, another lady whistle down sheet is spread. And it's the one that he found just before the carriage scene happened. And in his head, he was just like, we agreed to not have this put out. And Penelope was just like, we never agreed to anything. You told me not to put it out and I refused. <laughs> the sheet is being passed around. It's their engagement party. Penelope didn't want it to be passed around that day. Colin, while they're dancing, he's like holding her tight. There's a sentence about bruising her, him not necessarily caring if it hurt her or not. Like I know it didn't mean to come off as something that was that serious, but I couldn't help with like my 2024 mind reading that, being like, Ugh, I don't really like that. And I understand that in his perspective, he feels like it was like almost purposeful for her to send it out on their engagement night in that in his head he's all like because she's secured him now like she is his now he is hers so it's like she has a safety blanket and in his head he's taking it all wrong and so they break off early and then colin like kind of like drags penelope to his room they confront each other he's like 
telling her that you know what's been on his mind what's been making him angry and she's been telling him the truth of, and that you know this is a part of me this is a part of my voice this is what I do and like you're so embarrassed of it and you're embarrassed of me and she kind of like lets it out on him and there's a moment where he kind of like pulls back reels in he realizes that he's not embarrassed of her if anything he's jealous of her she has a business she has a purpose and that's one of the things that he's been dealing with the entire book that's something that's a huge part of his character that insecurity so he asked her to stay and this is where you know the warmth the, the calling that I love came back because that moment where he's just constantly telling her to stay to stay the night to to stay with him it's again it's vulnerable it's intimate and then it leads into their first time like the carriage I will be I will not be going into it because I will be a giggling effing mess. So in chapter 18, we get the mirror scene. And by mirror scene, I mean he is saying, you know, I want to see, see you sitting up lovely and large. I want to see them... <laughs> see, this is why I can't, I can't go in depth. I can't. I don't know how I'm going to survive watching it when I can't survive reading it. He's like, I want to do it in front of a mirror. And she's all like, now? And I was like, yes now but no he says later so we don't actually get the mirror scene and honestly i understand because as their first time like you know they probably want something intimate something a little bit more vanilla i guess something a little bit more like less kinky traveler and more just like i'm here with you <laughs> we're doing this and okay i'm gonna quickly like move on i think we're going to be getting it in the season my predictions on that are in my other video that i kind of like went into when we got that mirror promo scene after that we get a really serious moment where colin finally it clicks for him colin bridgerton is in love and it clicks for him and it's the sweetest thing. We see that love later on when we go away from that climax and we into the climax of the book. And that is when Cressida threatens Penelope. She realizes that Penelope was the one that is in, in charge and behind Lady Whistledown because of the last sheet that was put out. The reason Cressida found out that it is Penelope was because of the language that was used in the sheet, being the same language that Penelope used uh, while around Cressida. And that just goes to show that Lady Whistledown is capable of making a mistake. It kind of went full circle because Cressida highlighted that mistake and found out that Penelope was Lady Whistledown. Cressida leaves, Colin comes in, there's a cute moment of reassuring. There's a cute moment of I love you's. This version of Pollen is something that I do want to see. I want to see Colin in his protective era. I want to see him thinking. I want to see him scheming. I want to see him helping her maintain this persona that she has. So it's gonna be really cool to see what they do in the show. And if we are right, and if Reddit is right about Cressida bullying Penelope and ripping her green dress in the sneak peeks that we've gotten, then it would honestly like the more we see of Cressida, the more anger we feel whenever Cressida is on screen. I feel like it will be a good moment to kind of like have that story close with the threatening. But hey, we'll see because there have has been word of a new cast member joining. I forget her name, but um, she's going to be a lady that catches Ton's attention. I don't know if there's a lot of weight to her role and what she's going to be playing but these new additions to the new season make me theorize various different ways they can go about storytelling and it does steer away from the book so when it comes to the threatening and the lady whistle down reveal i am hopeful that they will do it correctly and definitely dramatically i just i hope it's not too anxiety inducing because i can't i don't think i could handle that there's this whole plan penelope's finding herself being protected and swarmed by the Bridgerton fam. Like everyone's kind of surrounding her and everyone's confused because they've been told by Colin to keep an eye on her, to keep her safe. And Penelope's like, what's going on? And that's another thing that I'm unsure if we're gonna get because it was so heartwarming to see all the Bridgertons come together, protect Pen. I don't know, it was just so sweet. I don't know if they're gonna go that route in the TV show, but I guess we'll see in the second part that we get in June. Colin has this whole thing where he is going to declare his love. But before they do that, they have a really, really, really sweet moment alone together. Together and it's it's so flirty it's so cute and oh, I love them I love Paulin so much and again this that 
we're probably not gonna get scene for scene, but variations of that I can definitely see like happening. And Colin doesn't tell her what exactly he has planned, but his whole thing is don't worry, I've taken care of it, like I know what to do. Penelope's solution was getting Lady Danbury involved. And by that, having Lady Danbury reveal that she is Lady Whistledown because that's what Penelope is comfortable with. Colin is just like, that decision is beneath you. Like you need to step into your power. You need to come out of your shell. I love that as a partner, he's kind of like pushing and propelling that character development for Penelope. Taking that like strong communication in that moment, finally like what we're waiting for, it leads to the end where we do get to see that. And he tells and admits that he's not embarrassed of her. He's never been embarrassed of her. He's proud of her and he wants her to be the same. It's the cutest thing ever, cutest thing ever. We get the announcement, he tells everyone that he's fallen in love with her. He's loud about it. I do think we are going to be getting a loud announcement declaration because in season one when Penelope was like talking about wanting to confess her feelings for Colin while trying to pacify him what happened with Marina she was just like when one is in love they should speak on it loudly and they shouldn't be embarrassed of it and that's honestly I feel like that's gonna come full circle and this time it's gonna be Colin because that's what she wants. That's what she was going to do in season one and it didn't work. So in season three we're going to see that with Colin. I know for a fact we're going to be seeing that with Colin and this announcement would be perfect for that. One thing though when the reveal happens where he's just like this is my wife I love her I'm proud of her and she is Lady Whistledown. People are clapping and Cressida you know apart from Cressida because she's all like no I don't know if that would happen in the TV show because like Penelope in the TV show has made a lot of decisions that have impacted the Bridgertons as well whereas in the books the Bridgertons were kind of like untouched with like the Lady Whistledown sheets from what I've heard. I wonder if like a lot of Bridgerton fam will also be upset or if like how the Queen will react and if the reveal will be happening to the Tawn or if it will be happening only to the Bridgertons. They probably aren't gonna have Lady Whistledown retire. Can't help but like wonder how they're going to close that up. Yeah, we get a really, really sweet ending. Lady Danbury is all proud, proud mother. Colin and Penelope end with like a quiet conversation with themselves. And I'm just gonna read that out loud because it's just so cute. Congratulations, Lady Whistledown, he murmured. I prefer Mrs. Bridgerton, she replied. Grinned, excellent idea. Can we leave, she whispered. Right now, she nodded. Oh yes, he said enthusiastically. And no one saw them for several days. Ah, oh, that's it. Oh my god, so cute. That's like the official kind of end. We do have an epilogue where we get to see writer Colin and writer Penelope. His insecurities with his writing are another fact that I didn't really touch on with uh, the book where we kind of see the progression of Colin coming to terms with his writing, feeling confident himself. Penelope is confident in her writing, feeling confident in herself. She's writing a book called The Wallflower. They're both writers, they're both, both nerds. It's so cute. I love writers. I love writers so much. I think that's why I also gravitate towards this couple because as a writer myself, I see myself in a lot of their insecurities. And Nicholas said it best. They are nerds. I love you with my past and I love you with my future. I love you for the children we'll have and for the years we'll have together. I love you for every one of my smiles and even more for every one of your smiles. Fictional men. Fictional men. Like the whole book. It had its flaws, but as like a story in and of itself, it tied up a lot of like the conflicts that were presented. The characters had their arcs, the relationship had their arc. There's a lot of uh, dynamics that I want to see in season three, and I can't wait for it. There's going to be a reaction of the um, small character profile that we did get. I'm going to include it with like the promo that we get like throughout the month. So don't worry, like I've watched it. I've seen it. I've reacted to it. Don't worry, I'm on the same page as y'all. Let's do this y'all. Like we've waited years for it to finally come out and it's going to be coming and oh, I'm so excited. It doesn't, if it doesn't feel real, but I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye.